All right, I'm turning to Good morning, everyone. The Senate Finance Committee is now in session uh, for voting. And I will again remind us all, I'm shouting under this mask. We'll need to kind of shout. I've had members of the public tell me that they were listening in, but they couldn't hear anything. So we have to remember uh, to speak as if we were at a football game. Um, we'll start now with uh, which analyst is going for it. Okay, David, you're on. Okay, uh, we, you have a bill here. It's Senate Bill 107. This is the Secure Wage Act bill from uh, that for Senator Hayes. The House did two things with their amendments. First, they uh, exempted the airlines from the provisions of the bill, and second, they struck uh, all references to the living wage because under the bill as amended by the Senate and sent over there, the wage progression in the bill for, uh, for, for these uh, uh, employees subject to the bill if you're, is uh, actually lower than the living wage. So if you were under a living wage contract, you would actually, if that contract expired and you were still working under a service contract, you would probably could be making less. So if you're on a living wage contract, you no longer would be subject to this, to this bill. So that's what the House did. And also they struck the airlines. All right. Can, can we get a motion? Uh, Senator Hayes? Wait a minute. We don't have the motion yet. The, 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 the. All right. So the motion is not to concur by the sponsor. All right. Is there a second? Yes, it's been seconded. Okay. Uh, now there's discussion. Senator Benson? No, no. Uh, uh, I'll just say I'm seconding it. Not to concur. We got lots of seconds. Okay. Lot. All right. Any discussion on the motion not to concur? No. Okay. All in favor? Um, let's call the roll. Let's just do that. Seed, you'll go to conference. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Let remember, uh, guys. We don't want all the sidebar conversations. The public doesn't understand. Okay. Senator Feldman. Aye on the motion not to concur. Yes. Senator Klausmeyer. Yes. Senator Benson. Is this on the motion not to not concur? Not to concur, that's on yes, the motion. Senator Kramer. Yes. Senator Hayes. Yes. Senator Reedy. Supporting my colleague, Senator Hayes. <laughs> yes. Okay. Senator Augustine. Yes. Senator Beidle. Yes. Senator Hershey. Yeah. Madam Chair. Yes. All right, so we'll send that back. All right. First bill is uh, House Bill 44, as amended. Excuse me. I'm going to ask us to hold down the side conversations. It's difficult. We've got to remember we're not just talking to each other. This is the only way the public knows what we're doing. All right. As amended, House Bill 44 reestablishes through fiscal 2023 the electric vehicle recharging equipment rebate program. The bill also provides $10 million for the payment uh, of electric vehicle tax credits to backlogged applicants. The House amended the bill to strike uh, tax credits for future years. There's an additional amendment reflected in the reprint in front of you on page five. This is for the consideration of the Finance Committee. The language here was developed uh, in concert with Budget and Tax and with the House. Um, uh, again, for context, uh, uh, MVA and MDE are considering changes to the Vehicle Emissions Inspection Program. Um, and the amendment would require a certain report to be uh, submitted to the General Assembly and would further prevent the um, selection of uh, someone to, to move forward with the new contract before March 1st, 2022. There's a second piece uh, that's being offered by Senator Hershey, and this would require by the end of uh, 2021 that the Maryland Energy Administration, in consultation with the Department of Transportation, submit a report to the Finance Committee in the House Environment and Trans Transportation Committee that would provide the uh, fiscal impact 
or provide information related to the fiscal impact of zero em emissions vehicles registered in the state on the transportation trust fund. Um, proposed measures to reduce the impact of zero emissions vehicles on the transportation trust fund and uh, a, uh, provide a survey of measures enacted by other states and jurisdictions. All right. What is your pleasure? Uh, Senator Kramer. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm looking through Senator Hershey's amendment, and I don't see anything, and I don't know whether it needs to be specified or not, but it makes no reference to uh, a survey of measurements as to the benefits of the reduction in fossil fuel emissions as part of what will be considered in this report because it seems to me if we're looking at just one piece of it, we need to know what is the what are the savings to uh, the the hospitals and the physicians because there's reduced asthma uh, in our communities by virtue of having vehicles that are not uh, burning fossil fuels. So it seems that this is a one-sided perspective as drafted. Um, can we add some language that? Uh, if we're going to adopt Senator Hershey's amendment that incorporates the other very important piece of this and what are the savings in costs to, um, you know, our infrastructure and, you know, by virtue of the fact that we don't have all this carbon uh, pollution. And I think that's a very important piece of it because there there are significant aspects to the other side. Okay. So if we could just add some additional language that incorporates or guarantees that that's part of this study, then I, I would support Senator Hershey and his amendment. Senator Hershey? Madam Chair, I would just say that um, I think all those considerations have already been uh, undertaken by the General Assembly and the fact that we're offering millions and millions of dollars in tax credits uh, for individuals that purchase these vehicles. We've already acknowledged all of that. We've already said that, this, that all of these great uh, environmental benefits occur as a result of electric vehicles, and therefore we're giving all this tax benefit to do that. So... Uh, I don't think that it's necessary that we study that any further. We've already made that decision to move forward, and that's why this bill has been before us many years, and that's why we're increasing the amount of money that is going to electric vehicles. Let uh, me ask one thing. Where are you finished? Well, I was just going to say my amendment was just very sp specific to um, the other side of electric vehicles not paying uh, a fuel tax and not paying for the infrastructure that you mentioned. So the, the fact of the matter is, as electric vehicles continue to drive on the roads, and what we talked about with the analysts last night is not only the vehicles right now, but as we, as we seek to achieve these goals in, the, in, in more and more electric vehicles, it's, it's less, and less, electric ve uh, less and less vehicles that are paying the fuel tax to use the very roads that they're driving on. So all of this does is say, let's, Let's analyze that. Let's do, with, do what many other states have done and decide, do we, do we look at maybe a fee is one structure, maybe a, a vehicle miles traveled is a, another structure, but there are very uh, uh, several structures out there that would enable these vehicles to contribute to the, uh, the upkeep and the maintenance of the roads and bridges that they're driving okay, on. Okay, so you, you're focused on a single variable sort of and I think what uh, Senator Kramer suggested. We've already is done that. that. We agree with it. Senator Kramer's completely right. Okay, Senator Bottom. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. I just wanted to agree with Senator Hershey on the issue of uh, nationally what's being looked at because at the NCOIL meeting last year, a whole more than a year ago now since we've been to NCOIL, um, this was a big discussion in the Transportation Committee about how to figure out the the usage on the roads with the electric vehicles because they're not paying gas tax. So it is a national issue, and I think we should at least be gathering the in information. We're not making a policy decision. We're just asking for the information and 
to look at for maybe a future policy decision. Thank Would you. Would you say, however, that once you ask the state to spend money to do a report, uh, there will be policy implications in any report, no matter what the scope of what we ask for? comprehensive and I'm not saying that Senator Hershey's amendment uh, may not be appropriate but I'm saying if we're going to do it let's make it comprehensive and ensure we're looking at it the picture in its entirety not just a tiny little piece of it so if we were to adopt Senator Hershey's amendment I'm simply asking that as part of that study we want to look at what are the benefits financially in, in adopting this kind of legislation because I'm confident there will be and I think that ought to be part of our future policy decisions. That's all, Madam Chair. So, okay. you know, with one or two okay. additional sentences in here, I don't have... A, you know, we got a rules committee coming up. I want to get through this. Okay, anybody else? Uh, Senator Reedy, Senator Klossmeyer. Yeah, uh, so if I could just make a quick comment, I mean, I, I agree with Senator Hershey, I think, has been smart to say we want to focus on zero emissions. I'm very troubled by the rise of this idea that we're going to start taxing everybody by the mile, everybody, because to me, there's a lot of, there's a lot of implications with that, a lot of Fourth Amendment to the Constitution implications, a number of other issues. But when we talk about zero emission vehicles, it does make sense to say, I think the state of Utah, for example, has tried to figure out, they have a way where they've, They've basically said if you're going to have a zero emission vehicle, you, there's, a, there's a fee you'll pay at the front end because we have to try to recoup some of the cost of the infrastructure, which, you know, makes sense. Gas tax is a user fee. I'm troubled by – I'm frankly troubled by amendment number one because I don't think that really belongs in this bill. This whole thing about this emissions testing, I mean, that, that's throwing something into the, this bill that I don't, think, I don't think any of this makes sense. But if we're going to have this language in there – then I, I think it makes sense to look at the zero emission side because we're talking it's a bill about clean cars so um, frankly I think that the, the general the MVA looking at, at adjusting the emissions testing program which has basically become a cash grab it's no longer really as much about about cleaning the air there are cars that still need to be tested but there's a lot of cars that really it's pretty obsolete now but the state's still getting that money every every couple years so I I actually applaud MBA for looking at, okay. at, at, at reforms. But anyway, I, I would support Senator Hershey's amendment. I might vote against amendment number one anyway because I don't know that we need it in the bill. All right, Senator, so how's that for making everything Senator really clear? Klossmeyer, <laughs> Senator Feldman, and back to Senator Hershey. Now, th this might be a crazy um, question, but because, because of the transportation fund takes care of roads and bridges and everything, um, is there a difference – between uh, what is the weight of an electric car in general? Is it a whole lot different than a regular car or SUV? Does anybody know? So maybe in in the future, what do you know how much they weigh? I mean, it, what think about a, a regular car, a regular SUV, a suburban riding down the road versus. Uh, a, an electric car or an electric suburban and it hovers down the road it's not even going to do that much damage to the road so maybe we'll be able to save money that way so but nobody knows how much All the right. difference well, we is. don't know wait a minute we're going into order now does anybody know that question okay no Senator all right Feldman. well um, maybe a week I, I, get all right senator Feldman. could i just suggest this yesterday senator kramer made the point that you know, we're kind of running out of time here, truthfully. I think this is a good amendment. I would say we don't have language. You know, Senator Kramer's point, I think, may be good, but we don't have language in front of us. We cannot hold this bill anymore to come up with the perfect language. So what I would say is I think we should take the Hershey Amendment and the other amendment, move forward. If Senator Kramer wants to draft a floor amendment, you know, perhaps then, you know, we get to the floor Maybe that would be, but I don't think we should hold up this bill anymore uh, to craft new language at this point. That's just my Madam opinion. Chair, I'm fine with that. And I'll okay. look at that as an option. So to, okay. for purposes of brevity, I, uh, I, I will Thank withdraw you. my request. And Senator Hershey, do you need to say something more? Are you ready for us to vote on your motion? 
I was going to say thank you to Senator Feldman, but I guess I have to say thank you to Senator Kramer as well, too, now. Okay. You okay? Can I mention, t um, typically electric cars are often heavier than conventional cars, so just answer that question. Thank you. Okay. I appreciate that. Guys, we've, we've got to get to the Rules Committee, and we've got to finish this up. Okay, okay. so I, I would move those amendments and at the same time move the I reprint the bill. Okay, so let's call the roll. Senator Feldman. Aye. Senator Klausmeyer. Uh, yes. Senator Benson. Yes. Senator Kramer. Yes, ma'am. Senator Hayes. Yes. Senator Reedy. Are we on the amendment or the bill or both? The bill is the bill is amendment. Okay, I'm a no. Senator Augustine. Yes. Senator Vital. Yes. Senator Hershey. Yes. Madam Chair. Yes. Okay. All right. Where are we now? So back again for discussion is House Bill 768. This is the Montgomery County Community Choice Energy Pilot Program. There are a number of amendments. Um, the reprint before you reflects amendments from Senators Klausmeyer, Hershey, and Feldman. And um, I can either take questions or, or address any specific ones that you'd like. Could you give okay. us, uh, Senator Feldman? Has well, a if, on. well, I was going to make a, I mean, if, if you want him to go back through the bill, uh, okay. the amendments, or I, I wanted to make some big picture comments. But, uh, quickly uh, do that. Uh, Okay, so just a couple of loose ends from the voting discussion uh, last week, so or a few days ago. So Senator Hershey mentioned about the Office of People's Council had supported, but he didn't know whether amendments uh, that they were offering had been on put on the bill. So just to be clear, OPC sent the committee an email the other night saying, in effect, or two nights ago, they support the bill irrespective of the amendments that they proffered. So those amendments are not on there, but notwithstanding that that was on uh, two nights ago. So I just want to make that point. With respect to Senator Klausmar, said we want to hear from the Public Service Commission. So they did not submit written testimony, um, but they sent us an email also uh, the other night on the only issue they raised, not anything about costs being in other counties or anything else. The only thing is they submitted a request for additional time to implement the program. I would say the House already, if you look at the bill, the House already did do some elongation of, of the program. If you look at pages 715 and 17 of the, of the reprint, the House already moved those things. And that actually cuts against Kathy, uh, Delegate uh, Senator Klausmar's point about wanting a shorter program. This actually, uh, the PSC wants to make it longer. We can come back to that. But the biggest issue, Madam Chair, I just want to make just some big picture points is was Senator Klausmar's point about making sure that nothing here about stranding costs, this was Senator Hayes made the point, Senator Augustine, Senator Hershey, nothing uh, should impact anybody outside of Montgomery. This is, so, so I do, one of the amendments is it's Senator Klausmar's amendment with a few extra words to tighten it up to make it as clear as possible. And we thought there's language actually on page 21 of the bill that we think deals with stranded costs already. But this is belts and suspenders language in this amendment that makes it absolutely clear that nobody outside Montgomery should bear any cost or any ratepayers outside of Montgomery. Um, as for the amendments from the other amendments beyond, you know, beyond this one big amendment plus a clarifying amendment that I've proffered, let me just make again quickly, and then then we can open it up for discussion. You know, we've got some retail supplier amendments. We've got some retail supplier inspired amendments. And I would characterize these amendments in all a candor as kind of we know uh, what's best for Montgomery and its residents, and we're here to help you amendments, okay? Um, so we, have, we went through a lot of hearings. Last year, just to remind everybody, this bill passed last year in the House, and we ran out of time here. During the interim, House members, members of the Montgomery delegation met with PEPCO, with BG&E, who were opposed to the bill, now they're neutral. They met with AOBA, who were opposed to the bill. They were neutral. So the folks were, these amendments, I mean, they didn't come to the table. We had public hearings in Montgomery County. None of these uh, amendments were offered. We had a House hearing two months ago. None of this was put forward. We had a hearing, and then it passed out of the House a month ago. And so uh, 
you know, and we had a hearing a couple weeks ago. These amendments were not proffered. So, you know, we have a long way to go before this is being implemented. Let me just make the, the final kind of point is, in the end, I, I just want to make this point to my colleagues that um, I absolutely do think that this should be up to Montgomery County elect officials, state, and local, um, after public hearings back in Montgomery, they're going to have to pass a law. All these arguments can be made at the local level. There's a vetting process at the PSC. They have to approve this plan, monitor every step of the way. And I think that's how Montgomery County will be looked out for. If the politicians make a bad call, they can get voted out. If the PSC approves plans that aren't good, we can step in. This isn't even kicking in until 2023. Um, and uh, you know uh, that's and then the final point I'll just going to make a point I think I, I, I keep in my head thinking about uh, Senator Hayes. We had back and forth about you know this is my district. Don't mess with our district. This bill only impacts Montgomery County and its residents. And while I do appreciate these amendments that are trying to look out for the greater interests of Montgomery um, in this pilot program, I really would urge my colleagues. Uh, to stand with Senator Kramer and myself uh, and let our elected officials look out, you know, for our interests. And that's what I think Senate Bill, uh, House Bill 768 does. So with that, there's questions for counsel. I just want to make those big okay. points about the... Are there questions for counsel? Is your question for All right, Senator, well, or Senator uh, Hershey and then Senator Cosma. It's, it's also in, in response a little bit. Um, I, I surely don't have a problem that Montgomery County wants to do something specific, uh, even if it is mandating that all of their residents have to um, join this aggregation group. Um, but I think it is fair for us to evaluate the bill, not in the protection of Montgomery County. I think the vice chairman's amendment that he's offered will, will satisfy some of those concerns. But we also have, you know, an entire energy policy uh, sector of, of a deregulated, um, open customer choice method to procure your own energy. And at least the amendments that I offered are trying to do just that, to, to make sure that the Montgomery County citizens are educated to what their choices are, that a bill doesn't come through and it says, you have to get into this no matter what, Actually, they still have choices. They could still go to SOS. They could still go to retail choice and decide themselves what they want to do. So it's not to say that I'm, not, I'm against the bill and, and the fact that Montgomery County wants to do that, fine. But you, you can't wipe out an industry or say that an industry can't continue to do what the laws of, of Maryland allow them to do. And all I'm saying is just to notify. My, my amendments are strictly technical, their notification, their transparency, their educational, they're not meant to undermine the bill in any way, shape, or form. It's just to help my colleagues provide more information to their citizens as they go forward and try to uh, push Would, this idea for them. Wouldn't you think, however, that considering it isn't going to happen today or tomorrow, you got a good while before anything is going to be implemented, that they will know it's a large, very diverse uh, county with very diverse uh, representation here uh, and a lot of them know a lot about this issue and they serve on committees that uh, deal with energy and utilities that they will be able without our help to decide how to provide education to their citizens for a pilot. Chair, sure, but mine, mine are very specific to what the PSC needs to do not what they need to do as far as educating but what what would happen in in uh, in customers' bills in the month leading up to this about information that might but be put they, forth. they're able to do that. I kind of do think it to me, I know you're trying to be helpful, but it's a little bit uh, coming across as patronizing that with as large and as diverse a delegation as you have looking out for themselves and their own citizens, they're the ones that got to stand for re-election. For us to say how they will educate and, you know, and the, the, I, I, I don't. And, and, and I, I like my colleagues a lot. I want to make sure they don't make any mistakes and they do come back after re-election. <laughs> so I'm just trying to help them out a little bit. <laughs> okay. Uh, Senator Kramer. Um, uh, Senator Klossmer. I'm sorry. I saw uh, it first. Um, and then Senator Frank. I, one of my 
concerns, and, and I've heard it with the SEAF fund. How are we going to do the SEAF fund? And that, but because everybody keeps drawing on it, and when I spoke to um, Ms. Smith yesterday, uh, I did speak to her for a while, and sh her she um, has forwarded to me all of the different things the PSC is. It's like a dumping ground right now. So you have utility regulations, consideration of climate and labor. That's one bill. Public utilities, gas and service regulator safety. That's another bill that they're, they're going to have to work on. Electricity and gas energy suppliers, supply offers. That's another. Electricity and gas limited income mechanisms. Another. Montgomery County Community Choice Energy, another. Public Utilities Electric School Bus Pilot Program, another. Renewable Energy Portfolio Standard and Geothermal Heating and Cooling Systems, which they're not real crazy about, but it's another. Electricity Change of Address, Maintenance of okay, Subscriptions point, and Contracts, so gonna, gonna Public Utilities point. Net Energy Metering, Residential electricity and gas supply billing, and this just this year, I believe. It's, if uh, I could butt in, Senator, I don't want us to run out of time. We well, got a well, rules I'm committee. Well, I'm just saying, coming. this is you asked me to call and talk to them, and this is one of, of of her thoughts. And and I I actually asked them if they would please come and talk to us sometime, and because we have not seen them in ages, and. You know, it's, 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 they, and they, I just have one question for um, uh, uh, Nathan. Uh, can you do you have the language for the Montgomery County stranded cost, and can you go through it? Certainly. So that's going to be on uh, page, I believe, nineteen of nineteen, um, and reflected here are two amendments. The first is from Senator Klausmeyer. The second is from Senator Feldman. You'll see these are very similar with the exception of um, Roman 1. But Senator Klausmeyer's amendment says that the Montgomery County government shall be solely responsible for the costs associated with any stranded costs for electricity supply or generation owned by a community choice aggregator and pay for any costs the Montgomery Ca County government is responsible for under item 1. Senator Feldman's version differs only in that Roman 1 specifies that the the uh, Montgomery County government will be solely responsible for the costs associated with any stranded cost for contracts entered into by the community choice aggregator for electric supply. Senator Feldman. Yeah, so my amendment's exactly the same as Senator Klausmeyer's amendment, except for that the word electricity supply was sort of ambiguous. And so I think the language that Nathan, uh, that we worked on that, that second part, just makes it more specific. Otherwise, it is Senator Klaus Meyer's amendment. And the other thing with respect to the PSC, if, you're, if Senator Klaus Meyer's main concern is the burden on the PSC, they sent us an email the other night. Basically, the only thing they said was they want more time to implement. And that, all, by the way, gets rid of the whole fiscal note because they don't have to hire a consultant. That was their email. Of, and I'm totally fine with putting that PSC amendment on. And so with that, that's the only issue they've raised in this committee is that. And if, if that's, that helps you, they haven't said anything else. Okay. Okay. No, All right. Here's uh, the letter. Wait, wait right a minute. We, it's not me. just a back and forth, and we've got to go to other members. Senator Benson. Yes, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, you all have heard what Montgomery County elected officials, that's the council, that's the delegates, that's the senators have done in the way of ensuring that this, it will not impact, well, it's going to be confined completely to Montgomery County. The other thing, the other thing is, it's a pilot study, and on that note, I'd like to move on this bill as amended. All right, we've got a motion on the bill as amended. I see Senator... Uh, Augustine's light, and then Senator Battle, Senator Hirsch. So, I we, we need to do something with the motion. Can we get somebody to second it? So we got something before. Okay, so right. I, I would just ask for clarification. I mean, I would be good if it was the Feldman amendment plus the date that was requested by the PSC. 
And is that what we are talking about right now? And if we are, then that's what I would just hope that that's what we're doing. Madam, uh, did send us an email. It wasn't, you know, submitted at the time of the hearing, truthfully, um, specifically asking for um, certain date. If I'm, you know, I'm looking at uh, 518 Wednesday night, they sent it to the whole committee with a preferred what the bill as written is and then what their suggested dates are. And uh, Montgomery, we're, I'm good. I, I don't want to speak for uh, Senator Kramer or the delegation. But yes, so the Feldman amendments plus the PSC request for an extension of time to implement, which they say now eliminates entirely the fiscal note, I think addresses Senator Klausmeyer's point. And that would be what I, I'm putting forward uh, for, for the committee's consideration. Yes. Okay, Senator Hirsch, and then I hope we can just to clear. I didn't see your light. I'm sorry. Do you know what? Right where I'm sitting at the moment, all I see is that uh, pole, and I did not. I'm sorry. I really the way I was sitting, I did not see your light. Don't feel bad. I have to stand up sometimes. Okay. Uh, all right. Come on. We still got another bill to get to, guys. Go ahead, but let's make a quick. We've got to finish. Just, we've got to I get just, another just a bill. clarification: the Feldman amendments. There's also an amendment on page seven that addresses AOBA's concern. Is that included in your Feldman amendments? Yes, yes I should have added that. So yeah. AOBA okay. last year was opposed to the bill. Now they're neutral. This actually, we think the language is actually already in there, but they wanted some clarification. Right. The AOBA. so this is AOBA's uh, amendment. Yes. So okay. I didn't want to use up too much of my time. I just wanted to clarify. I'll okay. argue more. Yeah. What pages? Pages four. All right, Senator Klausmeyer and Senator Kramer. Um, now, I, I, I just have to say that the, the letter that the public service sent to us was pretty vanilla, I guess you would say. It was just kind of like, this, this is what the bill does. But they never weighed in one way or the other, and I would have appreciated having the Public Service Commission here talking to me, and I expressed that to Lisa Smith yesterday. And I'm just saying that she was, she did say, we have so much to do, Senator Klausmeyer, this is going to be a big, big problem. And that's why I read all of those things off. And it has been the dumping ground and oh, okay. uh, so. All right, Senator Crane. Thank you, Madam Chair. I just wanted to offer that I have every reason to believe that the Public Service Commission is more than capable of accomplishing what it is that will be required of them under this legislation. I, they have my full faith in that I believe they can handle the requirements of this bill and I just also wanted to clarify in response to well, the first time point. Senator Hershey spoke on the bill uh, with regard to the fact that the good people of Montgomery County will certainly have other alternatives he made it sound as if this is it they will have no other choice M M Mr. they will uh, madam chair can I just I, I couldn't no, speak. Let me ask you just one question. I believe you probably got your vote if we could vote. And, and I'm going to, but I wanted to clarify, and we're going to. Th Madam Chair, never mind. Thank you, Madam Chair. Let's vote. I, I'm worried we've got Let's good. Vote. We, okay. We've Let's got a vote. motion before. Sorry, could you call for the question? Uh, I, I've called for the question. Let's uh, call Let's the roll. Vote. Let's call the roll. Senator Feldman. Aye. Senator Klausmeyer. Yes. Senator Benson. Yes. Senator Kramer. Yes. Senator Hayes. Yes. Senator Reedy. In explaining, no, just kidding. Yes. Senator Augustine. Yes. Senator Beidle. Yes. Senator Hershey. I would. <laughs> I'd like to have seen a few more amendments, but in deference that this is a local bill and I trust my colleagues can have this implemented correctly, I'll vote yes. Senator, Senator Jennings. Local courtesy, and I hope we extend that later in this session. I vote yes. 
Madam Chair. Yes. Go with the crown. Okay. Thank, thanks to everybody. Uh, we do another bill and we got to go to rules. <laughs> okay. Last bill on the list is House Bill 643. This was uh, up for a vote earlier this week. This concerns the uh, a person, it, for a person from knowingly manufacturing, selling, or delivering or holding an offering for sale a cosmetic product that contains specified in, 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 uh, intentionally added ingredients. This is uh, very similar to language that exists in the European Union and California also passed this. I know the uh, sponsor of the bill sent you all an email detailing how the department would go about enforcing the provisions of this bill. So. Okay, any, dis vote. any discussion on the motion? If not, ready for the question, let's call the roll. Senator Feldman? Aye. Senator Klausmeyer? Yep. Senator Benson? Yes. Senator Kramer? Yes. Senator Hayes? Yes. Senator Reedy? Um, yeah. Senator Augustine? Yes. Senator Beidel? Yes. Senator Hershey? Yep. Senator Jennings? Yes. Madam Chair? Yes. There's one more item. All right, there's one more item. All right, so there's a reprint in front of you of Senate Bill 577. This is a bill that we voted um, and sent over to B&T as their second. B&T amended the bill slightly further, and you can find those changes on um, pages 4 and 5. They reduce the fiscal impact by decreasing the amount that the governor is required to appropriate to uh, certain organizations as part of the Makerspace Initiative pilot program. So you could m move to um, move favorable on the bill as amended if you're so inclined. Okay, any discussion on that motion? All right, would you call the vote, please? Senator Feldman? Aye. Senator Klausmeyer? Yeah. Senator Benson? Yes. Senator Kramer? Yes. Senator Hayes? Yes. Senator Reedy? Yes. Senator Augustine? Yes. Senator Beidel? Yes. Senator Hershey? Yes. Senator Jennings? Yes. Madam Chair? Yes. All right, if that's it for now, thanks so much, everybody. We'll see you on the floor, and if you got rules, don't forget that.